New England, six states on the northeast of the USA, home to the blazing tree lines of autumn and about as close to Europe as you can get on mainland USA. And that's one of the main reasons the history of this region is so rich and fascinating. This is Plymouth. In 1620, a group of radical Puritan pilgrims landed here, and their story has become an enduring theme of heroic endeavour for America's ever since. The boat they came on was called the Mayflower. The Mayflower too is an exact replica of the vessel that crossed the Atlantic all those years ago. Climb on board and you may be lucky enough to bump into the man claiming to be the original ship's captain. Oh, yeah. Captain Christopher Jones? I am at your service, sir, though I'm uh, not accustomed to see strangers like yourself come up from my men's forecastle. Thank you. Well, oh, very well. Thank you so much for letting me on your ship. How do you fancy their chances in the new world, these oh, Puritans? Mercy. They are very determined people. They all agree that they will work, and none of them come from easy circumstances. So I crave that they may come to some success and that my men, the sailors, might be well remembered as having supported them. Now, those pilgrims weren't the biggest fans of opulence and ostentation, but a few hundred years later, here in Rhode Island, there was no place for those kind of reservations. That's because it was the Gilded Age in New England, and the Newport mansions are a testament to that. The Newport Mansions are a collection of 11 properties maintained by the Preservation Society of Newport County, a nonprofit organization that's dedicated to preserving American history in this region. And they cover 300 years, ranging from a colonial house in 1748, right up through the Victorian era, the Gilded Age, and right into the early part of the 20th century. They really are very much modeled after European palaces. That's what the architects were doing at the time, so that the Breakers is modeled after great Italian palaces in, Genu uh, in Genoa and Turin. Uh, Marble House, where we are standing right now, was actually modeled after the Petit Trianon at Versailles in France. The fact that there is so much of it clustered very close together in this tiny little residential area in this small little town on the coast of Rhode Island is truly remarkable. Dating from a similar era is Hildeen in Vermont. It was built by the son of Abraham Lincoln, and the great emancipator has left his mark. We have one of only three Lincoln stovepipe hats in existence anywhere, um, and it's the one in the best condition. Several pieces in the exhibit are from the um, booth that the president was in the night he was assassinated at Ford's Theater. Uh, we actually have um, a program of one of the actresses, uh, pieces of wallpaper, various pieces, as well as a, a life mask, not a death mask, of Lincoln's. The countryside of New England provided an ideal place for many people to get away and start again. A religious movement called the Shakers, an offshoot of the Quakers, did just that in the 1820s. And the Hancock Shaker Village in Massachusetts recreates the conditions in which they lived. The name Shaker came from the way that they would literally shake as they worshipped, ridding themselves of sin and the devil. There's not a whole lot of actual shaking going on today, but you can get a flavour of their simple pastoral life. Now, although the Shakers did have their own rules and regulations, in many ways they were like other Americans. For example, they did celebrate Thanksgiving. Don't tell my friend here. I think we'll keep you there, won't we? Now for a bit of rebellion. My journey started at the Mayflower, and if that represents the English escaping from England, this place represents Americans doing the same. You are now at the brand new home of the Boston Tea Party Ships and Museum, situated in Boston Harbor in the Fort Point Channel. We are at the original location of where the Tea Party happened on December 16, 1773. The Tea Party was the single most important event that led to the American Revolution. The Magna Carta stated that no British subject shall be taxed without their consent in Parliament. And this is what the issue was. There was no representation. So if this Tea Party didn't happen, we'd still all be British today. There were three ships in Boston Harbor. The Eleanor, the Dartmouth, and the Beaver. We are now sitting on the Eleanor. We had 20 days to unload the tea from these ships or the tea would be seized and the duties would be paid. The colonists could not allow that to happen. They could not allow this to happen. So the likes of Sam Adams and Paul Revere and the other Sons of Liberty were meeting at the Old South Meeting House. They were waiting on word from the royal governor to have permission to have the ships leave Boston Harbor with their cargoes full of tea. Well, that message came back, no. And at that meeting, that's where Sam Adams stood up and he said, this meeting can do no more to save the country. Boston Harbor, a teapot tonight. And that was a signal for the Sons of Liberty to get ready to march down to Griffin's Wharf and destroy the tea by throwing it into the harbor. 
So let's just for one moment pretend it is 1773, because I am going to commit what is, for an Englishman, a highly treasonable act. I'm going to recreate the Boston Tea Party with my comrades here. Huzzah! They've been very well trained. Come boys, let's do it. Okay. Oh, it's incredibly heavy. One, two, three. Huzzah! They'll have me in the tower for this. New England really puts pay to that tired old cliche that us Brits sometimes like to trot out about the US not having any history. Frankly, that is rubbish, or garbage as they might say here, because it seeps from every pore, teaching us about what shaped the American way of life and what heavily influenced our own.